In particular, we'll talk about the repolarization of the membrane. So by the end of this video, you should be able to tell us and identify the movement of which ion causes this repolarization. So just to remind us where we were at the end of the last video when we were depolarizing the membrane. And remember that that rapid depolarization is caused by this influx of these sodium ions. Remember the sodium ions are represented by blue squares, potassium ions by the golden triangles. And so we've had this rapid influx of sodium ions due to the opening of those sodium channels at threshold. So now, at the peak of the action potential, we're going to see those sodium channels close. So at the peak of the action potential, we see the sodium channels close. So watch very closely. I'm going to go back to where we were before. This is at the peak, or right just before the peak. When we get up here to the peak, watch those sodium channels. They snap closed. Now with this closing traps the sodium and the potassium inside. Because remember the potassium is just leaky, so it's not open. So may, while some ions might be diffusing across, not a lot. And remember, this is all happening within a few milliseconds. So due to this change in the distribution of ions, we now have a positive charge in the intracellular fluid. So again, if we look here on the graph, we're up here at positive 35 millivolts. So the charge inside relative to outside is a positive charge now because we've brought all of those sodium ions inside. That means it's the outside or the extracellular space has a negative charge relative to the inside of the neuron. So we're up here at the peak. What's going to cause this repolarization? So right here it says the closure of the sodium channels and the opening of those potassium channels. So we've just saw the closing of those sodium channels. So now the question is what's going to repolarize the neuron? The opening of those potassium channels. So now we see that our sodium channels here in blue are closed. Our potassium channels are not leaky anymore. They've opened up. So as those potassium channels open up, where does that potassium want to go? It wants to go outside because now remember the outside's negative. Potassium has a positive charge, it's attracted to that negative charge. There's also, so that's the electrical gradient. There's also a high concentration of potassium inside, and of course, that concentration gradient makes it want to diffuse out into the extracellular space. So, just as we had this rapid diffusion of sodium into the cell with the depolarization, we're going to have a rapid diffusion of potassium out of the cell. So potassium ions flow out due to the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient and take with them their positive charge. Now, if you were to have an unusually rapid series of action potentials, it could lead up to buildup of sodium within the axon and that could be toxic. But that only really happens in rare instances like a stroke or certain drugs can do that. So where are the ions now? If we look here at this diagram, we see we have more sodium ions inside and more potassium ions outside. So we have a higher concentration of sodium now inside in the intracellular fluid and a higher concentration of potassium outside in the extracellular space. And that's when we're here at this time point X. And again, this is important for those different activities that you're going to do. So there's now an activity for the action potential that talks about the repolarization, just like you did one for depolarization and for resting membrane potential. Now, is this where the ions should be at resting membrane potential. We're right here. We have ions, potassium outside and sodium inside. If we're getting back here close to resting membrane potential, can we have another action potential? No, because we need sodium to be outside and we need the potassium to be back inside. So what's going to restore them to that original distribution? Something we talked about earlier, I believe, is the sodium-potassium pump. So remember, the sodium-potassium pump is going to pump three sodium out using ATP, and then it changes configuration and pumps two potassium in. And of course, it requires ATP each time. So you can go ahead and watch this little demonstration. Three sodium enter the, the protein that's embedded into the membrane. ATP binds, changes the configuration of that protein, allowing the sodium to be released. Potos, potassium can now enter, and it's three sodium out for two potassium in. 
the configuration changes again and potassium is then released into the inside of the cell. So that continues to happen in order to get that resting membrane potential back to where those ions need to be distributed. And again, that's why the brain takes a lot of energy and um, you know, uses so much of the energy that we consume on a, on a daily basis.